Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the Christensen Arms Ranger 22 Rimfire. Now this rifle is available in 22 LR, it's also available in 17 HMR and 22 WMR. And I want to say thank you to Hound Outdoors for sending it to me. Number one, thank you for that. What can I tell you about this rifle? Well, the first thing I've got to tell you is it is incredibly light. Overall weight is 2,113 grams, which is four pound ten and a half ounces. It is ridiculous. Anybody who saw the unboxing video will see the genuine look of almost slight surprise and awe when I took it out and I had to grab my scale straight away and weigh it. It is, it is phenomenal. And although it kind of has the looks of a sort of a target and precision rim fire, I think for the precision rim fire world, people are going to want to add so much weight to it, you kind of spoil it. But let's have a look and tell you some of the details about it. Now, I've taken the moderator off, I've taken the scope off, so I'm just going to put those to one side. The moderator is a half inch by 28 thread RCC rimfire moderator. I'll just put that out of the way there, put the scope there too. That is a Zero Tech, I think it's called the Trace Scope, and it's, um, it's a 4.5 to 27 by 50. I'm maybe reviewing that at a separate time, but scope reviews don't tend to get that much traction on, the, on YouTube. So, Let's look at some of the details on this rifle. Starting out, you've got, as I said, a half inch thread at the muzzle. This is 28 TPI. Nice fine pitch, means your moderators stay on there tight. This is actually a tensioned 2 2 rimfire barrel, so the inner steel core is actually tensioned by the carbon fibre on the outside, which gives it greater capability of stiffness. And with a 2 2 rimfire, you haven't really got to worry about barrel heating changing. Um, the stiffness of it and the differential stiffness between the two materials as temperature rises and of course you haven't got the cooling issues either because it never really gets that hot. The external finish is super smooth, it looks beautiful, it compromises well with the, with the speckle finish on the composite stock too. Coming back to the action, this is an aluminium action, it's got a flat footprint, bolts into the receiver, there are two pillar bedding points at the front and rear of the magazine well and it locks in place quite nicely and there's no inherent barrel stress within it. There's a manual ejection on this and that's a steel claw which is actually in the bottom of the action, goes in before the action fits on top of it and it slots up through the action. There's also a steel recoil lug which binds this aluminium action into the composite stock. The bolt has two opposing locking lugs and it gives you about 80 degree lift on it. I haven't actually measured that and it doesn't stipulate in the manual, but that's what I will say. The magazine system uses exactly Ruger 1022 magazines, so it actually says Ruger 1022 on it. Those are very common, it also means you can use the, this is the 10 round mag that's supplied. You can also use the BX15, BX25 and of course any aftermarket Ruger magazines that are available. The release lever is a nice large lever on the front, just in front of the trigger guard here, and they do drop out quite easily like that, especially with the weight of any ammunition in it. But of course, you're generally only dropping it out once the ammunition's expended. And those slot in now, no problem, no bother. And of course, anybody familiar with the Ruger system knows how well they work. And that's in a Ruger 1022, which has, of course, got correspondingly quite a lot of dirty waxy projectile being sort of moulded into everything by the hot gases and the unburnt powder residue which of course on a bolt action rim fire you don't suffer the same it's a much cleaner burning rifle so that just makes the 1022 magazine better rather than equally compromises it can sometimes be particularly dirty ammunition to use in 1022s the trigger mechanism for the action is actually Remington 700 compatible, although it's not a Remington 700 compatible footprint because, as I say, it is a flat bottom on this action. Breaking weight, as supplied, is 1,200 grams, which is 44 ounces, but you can adjust that to suit your preferences. Length of pull on the stock is 30 and a quarter inches, which is 350 millimeters, which is, you know, not super long, but for a small, light, dynamic use room fire, it's not so bad. And if you want, you could always put spaces underneath it because the recoil pad can be removed. Overall length is 925 millimeters, which is 36 and a half inches. And that is for the 18 inch barrel, which is 455 millimeters, and that's with a one in 16 inch twist drain. The barrel as well as being tensioned is hand lapped, and it's guaranteed for half MOA at 50 yards. I had no problem exceeding that standard whatsoever with most of the ammunition types I used. And in fairness, with it being so light, I kind of treated it as if it was a hunting rifle, and I shot hunting ammunition, subsonic hollow points. 
Um, you'll see from some of the groups, they're really good groups, but there's often one that just maybe throws off a little bit and it spoils the group. I think that's more a factor of the ammunition than the rifle because, because I never use match ammunition with the rifle and I know match ammunition does tend to alleviate those flyers. But I treated it as what I thought it was most appropriate for. It is a superb lightweight hunting rifle. There are studs at the front and at the rear for a sling or a bipod. You've got a butt hook at the back, which means you can lock it into your shoulder. And that recoil pad is quite grippy, so it will lock well in position. The rail on top of the action is aluminium. It's a Picatinny rail and it's a zero MOA inclination. It's bolted on in four places. And I would presume at some point, if you really wanted to, you could probably add a greater inclination rail on that if you wanted to push the rifle to longer distances. But it's a bolt action room for how far are most people going to want to push it. And generally speaking, with a zero MOA Picatinny rail, you've got very, very versatile scope mounting options. You can add inclined rings, you can add inclined bases, you can add a mono mount, you can put night vision on it, day scope, whatever you want really. The trigger blade is grooved so it's nice and grippy and then moving back the handle's ambidextrous on the stock, it's a pistol grip. It's actually quite hand filling because the stock otherwise looks quite light but my hands fit that, you know, I think really nicely. The ambidextrous palm swell on it. The finish has got a very very slight texture to it. The barrel fully free floats and it's obviously stock is stiff enough that you can actually have to squeeze that quite hard to make it come into contact. So you're never going to have any problem with that on a bipod or from any kind of versatile shooting position. Barrel diameter is 21.8 millimeters, which is 0.858 inches. That's quite a heavy looking tube, but it's certainly light in realistic handling capability. The bolt handle is actually a screw fit, it says, so you can change these if you want. It looks almost too thin, like a knitting needle perhaps, but it's actually really good and it operates quite quickly. And because it's you know projected well from the action and it doesn't bind in its stroke either, I cannot complain about that at all. I think personally I'd probably like a slightly larger bolt handle on it, but horses for courses, it's what you like yourself. The safety catch is two position, forward for fire, rear for safe. It doesn't lock the bolt in either. And on the left side, you've got a magazine release catch to actually drop the bolt out of the action, which is thus. This bolt has got two extractor claws and it ejects on a fixed ejector pin, which is actually set in the base of the action. Um, it's two lugs, it lifts about 80 degrees, I haven't measured that precisely, but it worked beautifully through the test and you can operate it quite quickly. You notice when you're chambering rounds, it's not a sloppy fit. Head spacing is closely tolerant and I do like that. So I think that says a lot for the Christensen chambering of the barrel and also the manufacture of this custom action, which I have to say is very, very nice. So overall, my impressions are these. I think it's a super light rifle. I think it's a very nice super light rifle and it doesn't have any handling or performance compromises from that light weight. Would I want to use this for a hunting rifle? Absolutely. For a target or precision rifle, probably less so because most people these days want chassis and they're going to add a load of weight to it. The fact you can add a moderator makes it lovely and quiet. The barrel itself is stiff, the forend is stiff, the stock works very well and you do get good cheap piece alignment behind the scope. You can always add, of course, extra cheap piece height if you want to. That just goes to show who personalises and uses their own dope. The data on previous engagement can also apply to how you modify your guns to work for you. I have no complaints whatsoever about the accuracy and precision of this rifle. The bolt operation is fine, it's smooth loading, it ejects confidently, and the magazines are easy to operate and easy to get spares for as well. So you've got a lot of capacity there, that's 10 rounds, you know, and that's flush fit with the stock. You can add 15 or 25 on a banana size mag, and you've got a serious piece of hunting kit there. You'll note from the video it's quiet in operation, it's quiet in use, and generally speaking, because I've used it from sticks, I've used it from a bipod, I've used it handheld. So I'm quite confident in it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that review video. Please like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see my regular weekly uploads. If you go through to the end of the video, there's also a link to the British Shooting Show 2023, and that will give you details of how to buy tickets. And the fact is that next year, car parking is included for your visit. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.